In this lesson, we'll take a look at the method display.newImage in order to render images to the device. Later, we'll take a look at the uh, method display.newImageRect for rendering retina images to the device. I've got a new project, and the new project features a folder called images, and in that folder are my images, and there are two different versions. One is a version that is at a point to pixel ratio of one to one. Um, normally we don't think about point to pixel uh, because, well, we always are dealing with a one to one ratio. So this is sort of what you would normally design in Photoshop or your favorite uh, editing program. And then I've got another version of the image that's twice as large and has a point to pixel ratio of one to two. So for every point there are two pixels. The reason here is that with the iPhone 4, um, Apple introduced the Retina display, which has a point to pixel ratio of one to two. And what it means is that the actual resolution of the device is uh, 640 wide by 960 uh, tall pixels, but it only has uh, 320 points wide by 480 points tall. So it creates a bit of a um, problem for designers in that if you want to take advantage of the sharp imagery, you have to create two different sets of images in order to ensure backwards compatibility. One set will be the, for the iPhone 4, which it will include these twice as large images. And then for iPhone 3GS or earlier or uh, iPad first generation will be the original one-to-one. -one. And thankfully, Corona has an effortless way of switching back and forth depending on the device and we'll look at that when we get more into creating uh, retina images but for now we're just going to use basic one-to-one um, -one images okay so we'll go to the root folder double click main.lua we have a blank canvas let's get started we'll type local circle 01 equals and we'll call the display dot new image factory method and now open and close parentheses the argument that it wants is the string to that is representative of the path images slash and the file name is dot dash o one dot png semicolon at the end you don't really need it um, but since I'm used to languages that do require semicolons and it doesn't hurt I put them in anyways Let's save it and render to the device. And there you go. In one line, you have an image to the device. Let's render another image. Local circle 02 equals display dot new image. Notice also it's image with a capital I. Then open and close your parentheses. Images slash dot 02 dot PNG. Save and render. And render in the Corona simulator is file uh, relaunch. I, I call it render because I'm used to, again, um, doing a lot of time-based media when you're rendering. But it's really relaunch. Notice that the circle, the second circle is appearing above the first. So in terms of depth, in, since it was rendered later, it renders on top of circle 01. There are a few other arguments we can optionally put in, which are the X and Y. Or top and left, sorry. So from the top, we could say 100. Let's save and render. Oh, actually, I think it needs the left too. So 100, 100. There we go. Um, but I'm not actually going to use these. I don't like to position the. Um, I don't like to position the objects in constructing them. I like to position them after the fact. So first, you instantiate them then you can affect their properties. Circle 01.x equals, so we're gonna move it on the x, which is the horizontal, 100. Circle.y equals 100. And this is a case where you would need semicolons, by the way, because you've got two different directions on one line. Some folks would write these on two lines, um, assuming they're the right variable. I like to put my X and Y declarations on one line. It's a personal preference. Save it and render. Okay. Now let's position circle 02. Circle 02.x equals 50. Circle 02.y equals 
50 semicolon and render. There's a few other properties that we can access. Of course, we can find all the properties if we go to the Corona docs and find here in the API reference, you look for um, graphics and you can find common properties. So these are all the properties common to images, text, and shapes, which are rendered uh, graphics. Okay, so one particular um, property we can adjust is the rotation, circle 01 dot rotation. And I'm only putting it um, between the 01 and 02 declarations for my own sort of um, code needs. It could actually go later, but I want to put it right here. And this is degree, so let's say 90. And you can see it's rotated. Okay, so let's get rid of these property adjustments and return to the original state. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use display groups in order to insert the images into the groups, which are basically, uh, think of them like containers, and then move the containers around. So if you've done any kind of HTML development, you can think of display groups um, like divs. Okay, so first we'll create a background image for the display group. Local group 01 capital BG equals display dot new image, open and close, start string, stop string, and I actually forgot what the name was, so go to the finder, and it's group-01 and group-02. So images slash group-01.png, and I'm gonna copy this, paste it, and just change the 01s to 02. save it and since we're rendering four images the one that we should see since we haven't positioned them they're all positioned in the same place on the top of the stack will be this group o2 and there you can see it so there are three other images behind this so here's what we'll do i've created these background images for the display groups so now i'll create the display groups and i'll start commenting the code so um create images and assign two variables. So these are dots, backgrounds for groups. Now we'll create display groups. Think of them like divs. So local group 01 equals display dot new group local group 02 equals display dot new group and so the depth of the groups that is the stacking is determined by uh, what order you um, instantiate them so since group 2 was instantiated after group 1 Group two will appear above group one, so that's important. Okay, so there's no default appearance for groups. Let me comment out the images so you can see that. Save, render. See, groups don't have any kind of appearance. They're just containers. So now we have to add items to groups. Okay, so let's add to the first group. And that's done, group 01 colon. So you have to remember here that you're using a colon, not a dot, colon insert, and then the item to insert. And we use the variable. So we're gonna insert first the background, group 01BG. Save it and render, we'll do this slowly. And now let's insert the dot, group 01 insert and this will be circle o1 excellent so now if we before we get to group 2 let's do a few things circle o1 
dot x equals 50. Circle a one dot y equals 50. So 50 to the right and 50 down. Now, if we move the group, but don't change the circle properties, watch what happens. Group a one dot x equals 100. Group a one dot y equals 100. So you can see that the group moved to 100 um, on the x and y. The, the circle maintained its position relative to the group. So that's an important aspect of groups. And since it moved out of the way, we can see the background image for group 2, but it's not actually in a group yet. Now, let's add to group 2. Group 2, colon, insert. And here we'll insert... Um, group O2BG, and I'll put a space just so we can separate the code and make it neater. Group O2, insert, circle O2, okay, save it. And now that the group has items, it'll actually display above group one because it was rendered later. Excellent. So now we will position the circle within group one and two, or with, within group two rather. So circle O2.x equals, let's say 150, circle O2.y equals 150. And there we go. So the groups have their own position according to the stage, and that's a term um, shared with uh, ActionScript. And the stage is, has got an area of 320 by 480. And so you can position the group within this area. You can actually position it outside also. Um, and then you can affect the order or the stacking a few ways. Uh, you can create groups that can be stacked, okay, and the order in which they are instantiated determines the order of the stacking from bottom up. And then within the groups, you can have also stacking. So for instance, let's say that we're going to insert um, dot one or circle one into group two. What we would do there is go to group two, which is right here. And let's do group O2 insert circle O1. Save. And now group two has both circle one and circle two. Since circle one was instantiated after or was um, inserted after circle two, it should appear above circle two in that group. So let's copy and paste. And here we want to change circle one and circle two. And this is going to get a little bit messy um, because we, uh, we have now a reference uh, to the same variable in two different groups. It's, it's actually very, very messy. That's okay. We'll delete that and this isn't the best way to go about this admittedly but it'll work let's say a hundred and a hundred and redraw uh, I need them to overlap so let's say they both have the same Y uh, but this one inches a little bit closer Okay, so there it's above, and of course, if we change the order they were inserted, then the two would be above, since it was rendered later. So as you can see, it's very simple to insert images and get them to render to the screen, and you can group them um, using display groups, and then the order in which you instantiate them in your Lua file will determine their stacking order to the device.